Now to the election we told you about in yesterday's paper, wow. Republican Don Estes won the special election to fill now CIA Director Mike Pompeo's seat in Congress. Estes beat Democrat James Thompson by seven points. Yikes. Compare that to the 32 points that Pompeo won by back in November. President Trump also won there by 27 points, and Mitt Romney won the district by 26 points four years ago. Now Democrats are looking at next Tuesday's special election in Georgia's 6th district. Democrats Democrat candidate John Ossoff is currently leading polls in a field that includes 18 people. The election is likely headed to a runoff. Joining us now, Republican congressman and member of the Freedom Caucus, Ken Buck of Colorado. He's the author of the new book, Drain the Swamp, How Washington Corruption is Worse Than You Think. And you say, uh, Congressman, great to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, you, you actually say that, um, that the consensus is not uh, not p within the parties that it's actually the people in power and the people out of power and you either play the game with the people that are in power or else you get kicked to the side absolutely uh, there there is a bipartisan bankruptcy going on right now the people uh, in both parties are, are willing to spend more money they aren't willing to make the tough decisions that put their elections at risk why not well, because I mean, we've been talking are. about this for years. Like, what's? I mean, that's. I said that when I first ran in 1994, and we're at a. I was. It was four trillion dollar debt then. We're at a 20 trillion dollar debt now. If we spend the way that the budgets look like we're spending, we'll be at 30 trillion uh, in five years. And what's so embarrassing about uh, the, the current situation is uh, we don't have a major uh, military conflict going on. We don't have a major recession, and yet we are still spending to the tune of 600. A billion dollars in, in debt. Right. So what about entitlements? That's always been uh, the, the core issue for conservatives who said you can't be serious about cutting the debt and deficit without talking about entitlements. President Trump himself has said he doesn't want to touch those. So we're sort of nibbling around the edges of discretionary spending when we talk about saving money. Why is it so difficult in Washington to go after entitlement programs? Well, uh, because the folks that receive the entitlements vote. That, that's always the difficulty in, in going after any program. But uh, the, re the reality is that uh, uh, this president has taken Social Security and Medicare off the table. Uh, we are trying to address Medicaid uh, with a work requirement and, and giving states block grants in the Health Care Act. Uh, we'll see if that gets done. But, but you're absolutely right. A majority of the uh, budget uh, is uh, mandatory spending or uh, the, the entitlements. And, and uh, it's important that we nibble around the edges of the uh, and, and do more than just nibble uh, when it comes to discretionary spending. But uh, the, the mandatory spending is, is the big chunk. Congressman, do you think that Washington is a reflection of the country's special interests or does it create them? That is, people want, I want my mortgage interest deduction, Willie wants uh, his, you know, wardrobe deduction, uh, whatever it might be. Ouch. Uh, what, and that creates a need for uh, these programs. Uh, is Washington just reflecting what their constituents want, or is there a greater good that's really not happening? Well, I think there's a greater bad. I think that uh, the, 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 the large corporations, the large unions, the large interest groups are playing in Washington, D.C. Uh, in, in spite of the interests of the American people. Uh, I, I think that it, it, uh, there's very, very little relation between what the American people need and, and what the interests are in D.C. Yeah, can you explain really quickly, uh, I don't want to bore people, when you're talking about mandatory versus discretionary, when everybody's talking about cutting spending on the Hill, they're talking about cutting from 10, 11, 12 percent of the budget. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, defense, interest on the debt. Takes up what, 60, 65, 70 percent of the budget, and it's the fastest growing part of the budget. Right. Like, how do we get that message to Americans that we're going bankrupt and taking five dollars away from the National Institutes of Health is probably not the move we want to make? Well, it, it is and it isn't. Uh, it is certainly a good first move to take uh, education, transportation, other programs, move them back to the states where they uh, started and Wait, where they belong. But that's not going to fix our budget problem. It, is, it isn't going to fix the whole budget, but it is, it is the right move to start with. The, but it's going to fix a small part of the budget. We're right. going bankrupt if we don't go, and you said it yourself, towards the mandatory, 
mandatory programs. Absolutely, and and uh, the fixes on Social Security are, are fairly uh, easy to envision. They aren't easy to implement, but they're easy to envision. We've got to raise the retirement age. We've, we've got to uh, do do other uh, uh, simple things that will get us down that road. Medicare much more difficult because it's tied in with the, the health care issue yeah. uh, more generally. But uh, there are fixes. People don't want to vote on those because they're, they're comfortable in the swamp. Something else to sprinkle into this conversation. John Meacham wrote a forward to a book by your former boss, Charlie Peters, titled We Do Our Part Toward a Fairer and more equal America. Part of what John wrote here, the 1930s may seem as remote as Agincourt or Appomattox, but the forces that shape the decade are familiar in our own time. Demagoguery is on the rise, as is unease about the durability of the basic institutions of society. In the summer of 1932, Franklin Roosevelt remarked that the two most dangerous men in America were Huey Long and Douglas MacArthur. Long because he could lead a populist revolt from the left, MacArthur one from the right. Explain that a little more, John, how it applies to what's happening today. Well, the book Charlie's written is about really what happened to, he ran JFK's campaign in the largest county in West Virginia in 1960. So he had, he had the most cash. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you're telling <laughs> There's a, that's He a had whole, the biggest that's a whole separate thing. That's a whole separate thing. But what, how did a Kennedy voter in West Virginia in 1960 become a Trump voter? in 2000. How did an Obama wow. voter in Wisconsin in 2008 become an Obama uh, Trump voter in 2016? Charlie's argument is that there was a spirit of generosity in the country from the, what he calls the Roosevelt era, really from 32 to about 65. Uh, and that there were there have been a number of forces, including uh, greed, uh, a kind of rampant consumerism, uh, a need to make a lot of money that has helped drive the country apart. We don't have the unifying experiences of a draft of widely uh, experienced public schools, and that cr has fractured the country in ways that can be recovered because the 30s, as you kindly quoted, right. were not exactly an idyllic era either. There, were, right. there was a, a central existential question about capitalistic democracy. Was it going to last? Right. So there's the, there's the balance, Congressman, and that's the question. How, how do we strike that balance where we take care of the least fortunate among us, but we also don't make unwise investments in bureaucracies in Washington, D.C. that don't work? Absolutely, and, and uh, the reality is uh, up until the, the 1940s, we didn't have the kind of deficit spending in our country's history that we've had since then. And, and we are engaged in deficit spending in a way that allows uh, uh, members of Congress and United States senators to avoid the tough decisions. And, and we've got to have a balanced budget amendment. We have to make sure we make those tough decisions yeah. uh, so that we're responsible. I couldn't agree more. And, and a balanced budget amendment, and you know what, I don't care. I don't care what year they say. I want the next person running for president telling me when they're going to balance the budget. Mm -hmm. If it's in the year 2525, that's better than just pushing then it no off. Answer. Nobody will give an answer anymore, and I understand it's it's difficult. The experience teaches us, history teaches us, Charlie argues this in, in the book that it is a combination of public and private institutions right. that work. What won the Second World War? The government and private industry. Right. It was a massive mobilization. Uh, so it's not all one or all the other. It requires an intelligent ability to realize what works in government, what doesn't, and pushing forward because when you look at what government did in the 30s, 40s, 50s, it created the greatest achievement arguably since Rome, the American post-war middle class. Run. And the, 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 the strength that won the Cold War is an immense achievement. And we've lost our way on this. And the argument for Charlie is that if we had a spirit of generosity, we would work better. All right. Congressman Ken Buck, thank, thank you so you much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks, Congressman. Greatly appreciate Focus, it. Drain the Swamp, How Washington Corruption is Worse Than You Think. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.